Hello, this is Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman of Columbia University speaking to you today for Medscape. Uh, the title of my comments today could be called The Ketamine Challenge or When Practice Leapfrog Science. And uh, the reason I wanted to address this is because of the fact that um, we are in a time when uh, fortunately there is a exciting new uh, pharmacologic agent that's being used uh, in the treatment of mental disorders and opens up sort of a new pathway for future drug development. Um, that is the use of an agent ketamine, uh, which has been uh, used uh, as an anesthetic previously in children for pediatric conditions and also in burn victims, um, and uh, acts specifically by virtue of its effects at blocking the activity of glutamate on the NMDA receptor. Um, recent research uh, pioneered by a variety of investigators uh, from Dennis Charney and uh, Carlos Zarate and um, uh, uh, Sanjay Matthew um, have demonstrated that uh, people who have treatment-resistant depression that's failed all medications and in most cases ECT, uh, in some cases can show a dramatic reversal of their symptoms with even a single dose of ketamine. Um, this work has been extended to other disorders and uh, uh, promising results have been seen with conditions like severe obsessive compulsive disorder by virtue of the work of Carolyn Rodriguez um, and Blair Simpson. Now, um, this is cause for, uh, I think, uh, uh, satisfaction and, and, and excitement, but it also raises some worrisome uh, concerns. Um, the reason for this is because um, ketamine, which has in this case been repurposed to extend its uses beyond its traditional anesthetic and pain relieving purposes to neuropsychiatric disorders, um, is a pharmacologic cousin to fencyclidine or PCP. Now you, remember, you might remember PCP was a drug that had a certain sort of popularity in the late 70s and 1980s as a recreational drug, a hallucinogen, um, which in many cases uh, had catastrophic adverse effects. Um, I can remember my own experience as a, uh, a resident in the emergency room seeing patients uh, being brought in who were wildly agitated, floridly psychotic under the intoxication of PCP, um, which is basically an agent that was used in veterinary medicine as a, an animal a tranquilizer. Um, PCP acts as a, an MDA receptor antagonist, uh, as does ketamine, um, perhaps more potent. Uh, and, but PCP was shown to be, in addition to being psychotoxic, in humans in animal studies to have certain neurotoxic effects uh, on uh, neurons. So a reason to uh, be concerned about the potential toxicity of these pharmacologic agents. But ketamine has been used safely for anesthetic purposes and now is being applied for a treatment of refractory neuropsychiatric conditions, all of which is good. Um, but because of the dramatic results in a very uh, dire population, people with treatment refractory uh, mental disorders, um, the use of ketamine has really expanded um, before the research can define or answer all of the questions related to incorporating a new treatment agent into uh, standard practice. Um, and you have um, a process by which uh, innovative psychiatrists are responding to, to the um, pleas of patients to make treatment with ketamine uh, available in one form or another. And so you have different ways in which this is being provided. Um, but bear in mind ketamine, which is approved by the FDA for the anesthetic purposes, is not orally available. It's only administrable in, in parenteral uh, fashion. Um, and uh, because it's used really as a single dose for anesthesia, uh, the dosing parameters for psychiatric illness, which presumably require uh, ongoing continuation of maintenance treatment after acute treatment, haven't been fully worked out. Um, and if we're talking about something that's used as an anesthetic, uh, given preventrally, usually intravenously, um, 
can this be done in an office? Does it have to be done in a hospital? Do you have to have an anesthesiologist present? Can psychiatrists administer it? Um, what is the appropriate dose to be used? Um, what is the appropriate dosing interval if it needs to be repeated? Um, these are questions that haven't been answered and are beginning uh, to be, or in the process of being studied. Um, also, uh, because of the fact that the NMDA antagonism has been demonstrated as a therapeutic mechanism, many companies have begun to pursue NMDA antagonists as a, uh, a target, or NMDA receptor uh, as a target for, for drug development. So we hope to have uh, agents available in the near future that are more practically applicable to the treatment of psychiatric disorders, oral administration, uh, longer acting duration of action, um, dosing which has been previously established, uh, but this is all sort of in process right now and uh, we don't know exactly when it's going to come to fruition. So I think the question is, is how do we safely utilize this finding and this currently available treatment agent uh, uh, repurposed and uh, suboptimal in terms of its um, mode of administration as it might be. Uh, and uh, you know, the question is, is that we must you know, try and use the treatment as we can now, but in a very cautious and, and careful way so as not to really overstep uh, the level of our knowledge. Now, using new treatments that have some potential risk that aren't fully uh, studied um, is not something which is unique to psychiatry. Um, this has happened in many dire illnesses before. Probably the most dramatic application of that is with the AIDS epidemic in which there was such a uh, uh, urgent need for treatments um, to forestall you know, eventual mortality um, that treatments were being you know, applied before they went through even the most uh, rudimentary kinds of uh, investigational uh, testing. Um, we also see it though with other conditions with uh, cancer, um, with autism, with chelation therapy and things of this sort. Um, and most recently uh, with the uh, outbreak of Ebola when treatments that were you know, had barely been used now needed to be rushed into service in order to try and stem this um, you know, potential infectious disorder uh, scourge. Um, so. You know, it's understandable that there would be the same kind of rush to try and use a new novel treatment that is effective even in the most refractory patients. Um, but we must uh, uh, do this cautiously with any disorder and illness, but particularly in the area of psychiatry where we have a little bit of a notorious history to overcome. Remember malaria therapy, remember lobotomies, um, the beginning to use LSD before it sort of spun out of control. So ketamine has opened up a new therapeutic pathway for the treatment of depression and uh, potentially other psychiatric disorders, but uh, we must use it carefully uh, and in a very you know, professional uh, and rigorous way now uh, while we're trying to sort of extend our knowledge about uh, this mechanism of action and develop uh, analog agents that um, have a more uh, uh, that's, that are more practically applied to the treatment of psychiatric disorders. So for today I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman, Columbia University speaking to you today for Medscape. Thank you for your attention.